Hello, hello. Is everybody in? I don't know what's going on. Just give me a minute. I'm going to try to sort this. Can you download a song? These bugs. It's yours to use forever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Let's see. I think we are streaming now. Can everybody see me? Paul, how you doing? Okay, I see mm -hmm. the chat's coming. Okay, I think it's working. Yeah, I think we have people now coming in. We watch. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for letting me know. Paul Bork, how you doing? That Lelex, bonsoir. We have some French people. We have some Irish people. We have some people from all over the place again. It's great to see. Good to see. So uh, I think we're okay to, to go. So Andreas, he can see me. Dave can see me. Thank you. Great. We can start up then. So hopefully everybody had a good week. Um, for me, it's been uneventful again. Uh, another COVID week, nice and confined. A lot of rain. Now it's very cold. It's freezing. So just let me know, guys, if the stream is jumpy or if the frames are jumpy. I'm trying to upscale the stream to 1080 and 60 frames per second. So if it's not good, I'm going to drop it back down and we'll see what happens. It looks to be okay for the moment. Let's see. I'll try to keep on going like that. If it's good, if it's good quality. Okay, hopefully it'll stay like that. So yeah, confined again for another week. Uh, waters are really high. We had a lot of rain. Now we're having very cold on top of it. But uh, it seems that some of the jack pikes are starting to move. Stimbler, all well, amigo. Thank you very much. Thanks, Julien. Thanks for confirming. Everything is nice and smooth. Okay, great stuff. Mary, how you doing, Mary? Thanks for joining. So, yeah, uh, fishing conditions are not great, but from what I hear, we start to see some uh, jack pike getting a little bit active, starting to move in some shallower area. They're not yet in the close to the reed beds, uh, but it's coming. So another few weeks, a uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, hopefully the days are starting to get a little bit longer. So that extra daylight, it's going to bring the fish on onto feeding and spawning eventually. So we should be looking forward to some good fishing soon. Uh, we're still closed. The lodge is still closed. Looking at the COVID situation, we're going to be closed for another while. So on the bright side, it's going to give me plenty of time to fish. So I know a few of you have asked some fishing videos, so I'll get a few going. So, yep. See, everybody's here. Let's start then. Yes, bunnies. We covered uh, the last time the synthetics, and I definitely think that um, uh, bunny and rabbit, it's a fantastic material. Uh, if I would have to pick only one, one streamer, one fly to fish any predatory fish around the world, let it be salt water, fresh water, it'll be, it'll be a bunny, a little bit a bunny strip. It moves great. You can tie it in different size. Um, a lot of people are a little bit uh, scared about the bunny. Uh, Always the recurring thing you hear, it's um, it's heavy, it's like casting a wet sock. But you just have to put in proportion the amount of bunny that you put with the rod that you fish and your abilities to cast. Uh, not, the, not everybody can cast heavy wet flies. Uh, for my pike fishing, I only fish in 10 weight. So a small bunny, it's really no problem to cast, absolutely no problem. 
uh, and it catch a ton of fish. Like I said the other day, we we're talking uh, with the synthetics uh, about using double hooks and about using a stinger hook. And uh, I said, if that's the case with pike, just nipping the end of your fly, I usually switch to a small bunny. And uh, more than often, you connect with those fish that were just nipping at a big wiggle tail or, or big T-bones. When they don't want to commit, uh, yeah, just downsize to a bunny. So there's a few different types of bunnies over the years that I've been using for pike. Uh, and all have been very, very, very successful for me. So, yeah, uh, let's try and have a look at the first one. One that I really, really like and I tie in various ways. I used to tie it a lot more complicated than that. It's the my good old Chewbacca. This is like the modern version of Chewbacca of Chewy. It's a simplified version uh, and it catch a lot of fish. I used to tie it. I think I kept some of the original ones here. They're well bashed and well worn and one I think yeah, this one here is missing missing a leg in action, but there's still one walking, so that's not a big problem. So I used to tie them with um, with marabou on the belly for movement and to absorb the water, uh, deer hair on the top to make it kill properly. And now I've changed all that. I used to put uh, little ears on them and moustaches and all sorts of uh, thing, but uh, after quite a few years fishing those I've realized that pike don't care about ears on mice patterns or anything like that so the small details uh, they only make a difference for you and as a tire but not for the fish really especially when it's on top uh, of the of your tie most of the time they see the flies by spotting them passing over their head so the underbelly usually is more important than the what they see on the top so I quit putting ears on my little Chewbacca's so yeah let's start to tie one and uh, for bunnies for rabbit material uh, i usually buy full pelts simply because you can buy the amount you that you want you can tie uh, you can cut them yourself uh, it's a lot cheaper in the long run and in the short run uh, and you can cut the, the width that you want. Uh, you're not stuck to with uh, three millimeter or sometime some brand sell, uh, they sell Magnum, Magnum rabbit. That's not really Magnum to me. Uh, I like sometimes to really push uh, some of the flies, especially when I fish them in rivers. I don't have to cast too far from the raft. So a good wet sock, uh, nearly a water load at the back and fling it across the river uh, very easily so i like to cut really wide um, rabbit like uh, up to eight even 10 millimeter width but for this uh, if we use a double one like this there's no point to go too too wide so i just cut some smaller ones these ones i just uh, dip them in a little bit of uh, acid dye red acid dye just to give them a little bit of a color so normally that was a that was a white rabbit pelt, uh, full pelt that I cut, and I just uh, dye them in a little bit of a, yeah acid dye. It really takes well on the leather, not so much on the hair, but it's okay just to give a little bit of color. So let's start with this then. Let's see everything. Yeah, we're on. All right. Let's see the. Steam blur, red and white, to go color. Yeah, it's uh, it's always in fashion, red and white. We're always in fashion. Always a really good color uh, for lures as well, for flies. Never out of fashion. They seem to like that. So, all right, let's stay a little chewy. As usual, I like a good layer of thread. Make the flies nice and durable. This again, it's a, it's an easy tie, a fast tie. Like I said, uh, most of my ties are like what I call what I call guide flies. So, cheap, cheerful, and they work and they catch. So, okay, we're gonna start 
on the back of the hook. Now I'm going to show you the... Yeah, I used the right Magnum Bobbin, Andreas. I've had that one for years and they're great. Like, uh, that's all I have right at the moment. So we're going to tie... Start with the rabbit at the back. So Pascal One, thanks for joining. Jet Dragon, how you doing? Thanks for coming, man. Thanks some red tags for trout. Yeah, it works well too. So yeah, one of the dreaded thing when people uh, tie bunny flies is the dreaded uh, bunny bulb where you yeah, get the rabbit strips that after a few full casts wraps, wrap itself around the hook and uh, it doesn't swim well and you're not gonna catch anything. So I'll just show you a really easy way to avoid that. Okay, we're gonna start tying one on each side with a slight angle. So one going down and one we're gonna put going back up like that. We're gonna cross them. Make sure they're well on the top sitting properly before that glue catches on onto the rabbit that's one thing super glue really really stick to the leather of the rabbit at the back so you'll never have a fear of the rabbit moving once it's it's super glued all right if you want you can put a little bit of flash here uh, sometimes i like to add uh, out of congo air uh, a little trigger spot here just a little bit of bright color if you want on the back but today we're just going to go straight with the normal belly belly and we're not going to over complicate things for the first one after you can do what whatever you want like but we have hey guys how you doing <laughs> thanks for joining mate um Pascal, what hook do I use? Always the same. You can follow all the streams, all my ties. I always tie my pike flies, most of my pike flies with the Sakuma Manta Extra. Simply because they're cheap, they're super durable. I never had a hook opening. Uh, they sharpen very easily and uh, they don't really get uh, blunt very easily. So it's a really good hook. I'm very happy with it. So I'm sticking with that. I know there's loads of pike hooks out there now at the moment, but uh, always been happy uh, using Sakuma. Like I said, I am not sponsored by hook brands or uh, material for pike flies. So what I use is usually what I works and what's good for my wallet as well. So Eric Margier, how you doing? Thanks for joining. So now not to have bunny balls, not to have big bait ball at the back keep these legs tangle free i use some heavy nylon or fluorocarbon or whatever you have this is 80 pound uh, put it here you can see it simple trial in 80 pound fluorocarbon cut a little length and we're gonna now you probably have seen that technique where you put the loop at the back of the hook to support the the rabbit so it's uh, it won't tangle but actually if you tie that loop after the rabbit it's going to lift it even more so you see here we after tying the rabbit first and we're going to tie that hoop right on top of it Takes a little bit. That's a tick. Now you don't want it to poke too far at the back. You can adjust it after. So now you see that fluorocarbon is sticking above the above the rabbit. So what you can do as well, if you have if you have a single one, I usually leave it like that. You can see it's just nice and round. If I have a double tail, what I like to do is just pinch a couple on the sides like that. Uh, thank you guys. I start to see the first donations coming. Thank you very much. I forgot to thank you for the last donation, the last stream. 
That was fantastic. Thank you very much, Andreas. Thank you very much for your dono. Much appreciated, my friend. Like I said, they go back in the stream, these donations. So if you want, you can either way uh, donate through the Super Chat on YouTube or on the... Where is it? It's right here. Right here. I have it here on that camera. Support me. Buy me a coffee. You don't have to, but if you want to, it's there. So, yeah. As you can see, I just pinched the fluorocarbon and we get a little bit of a square now. So for a double rabbit, it'll sit a lot better. So now all you have to do is push the rabbit back through that loop of fluorocarbon. And all of a sudden, you see that rabbit is sitting super high, nice and bouncy. And you're going to have a very, very little problem with... Uh, um, rabbit the the rabbit going around the shank of the hook um actually we can do a little trigger point there might as well while we're here and get a little bit of color at the back well, we're using red so might as well put some red at the back and what do we have oh, we have a nice rust here that's only that's only optional. This is a simple trigger point just under the arse of the fly. So, like I said, most of the of, of the time, these flies will be hovering above the fly, the pike, and the pike will be looking above him and seeing those. So you can just put a little tag of Congo hair at the back, like this. That usually helps as well. You can cut it square like that, and that'll give a, a little bit of a help as well for the for the rabbit not to foul onto the hook. All right. So to get a good balance, to get the this fly sitting properly, I'm going to make the belly out of um, Congo hair. To absorb the water, like I said, I used to do it uh, out of uh, marabou feathers, but marabou is great, but with pike, they don't last long, like they get ripped to shred very quickly. So uh, Congo hair uh, is uh, a lot more resilient. So we do Congo hair and on the top we're going to do some uh, belly hair. You can do it with uh, bucktail as well. Bucktail or belly hair works. One thing important, it's not to pack your belly hair too tight. You don't want it to be a popper, you don't want it to be a diver, it has to sink. So with the weight at the back um, of the wet rabbit, it's going to sink that fly, no problem. So don't overdo it with the, with the belly hair on top. Pascal is asking, do you have the same result if you tie the fluoro first before the rabbit? No, you don't. Um, a lot of the videos, a lot of the tutorials show you where you tie the, the loop uh, before the rabbit. And uh, you're going to see it's going to change a lot of things if you tie it after. Like I said, it's riding super high now. And you get that nice spring action at the back. Okay, so just a simple one length of Congo. I'm going to cut it in two. And then that double section, I'm going to cut it in two again. So you end up with small length of Congo hair. About that size, that's just enough to, to cover the belly. We're going to trim that, that belly after. And... Uh, I'm going to start with the white belly hair. So like I said, don't go too heavy on the belly. Just a little pinch at a time. We don't want that fly to be sticking out too much. So clean the belly hair and get rid of all these fibers, all the short ones. Like I said, these are fairly easy ties. Don't spend too much time. So I'm going to tie it 
on the top just on the top so make sure that when you put pressure on your thread it's just sitting on the top Hi hey, Matthias, thanks for joining. Thank you for joining Matthias. It's nice to see faces week after week. Getting used to this. All right, now the belly. So that length of Congo hair, just bang in half in the middle. Spread them out just to join with the, join with the belly hair so you don't have too many blank spots or open spots. And for this, you don't have to tie and catch the belly hair or the Congo. You just build a little dam at the front like that. So you get a bit of a, a bit of a bulk happening like this. And we're just going to repeat that process. A little bit of belly at the top and Congo at the bottom. This fly has got me my, my first big, big pike over 30 pounds in Alaska. So I, I remember that day. I knew there was a special fly. <laughs> Sight fishing a fish over 30 pounds is pretty neat. Like, and it's got me some, some, a lot of good fish here in Ireland too. Like, Okay, now we're going to keep on layering this. Okay, belly at the top again. Make sure it just sits at the top like this. And a little bit of Congo on the belly. Easy, simple. And again, build a little dam at the front. Uh -huh, no problem here. Right at the end of the, a bit of a tangle in the, in the thread. I'm gonna have to undo that spool. The problem of doing live streams. So we're just gonna secure the thread with some super glue. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to un untangle this. I don't know what happened in here. If you have any questions when I fix that, no problem. Fire them up. I think everybody's okay. Like I said, they are, they are fairly straightforward ties. Nothing too complicated. Oh, uh, yeah. back in no time. Sometimes sometime if I don't look when I when I spool this with the with the drill, if it goes in that little blue lip on the spool, it just gets caught. I will get it out. Thank you guys. I see some generous donations coming. Actually with last week's donations I got some extra materials for next time. So it'll be interesting. I don't know which way it's gone here. Live videos. Eh? It's great. Okay. The spare one. Ah, uh, get everything again. Uh, Dave, Dave, Dave. Let's see what you're asking there, Dave. Dave, have you ever thought of doing a basic Nubik starter fly material pack? Um, not sure what you mean, like, uh, 
a list of uh, material yeah I can I can do that it's uh, it's fairly easy you don't need much to start uh, tying flies for pike and to be effective you have no problem <laughs> Now Lucas says he just made this 12 pheasant tail and I haven't even finished the fly. I know, yeah, but you're fishing for trout, it's different. <laughs> As many knows, my fish eat your fish, so that's that's usually what happens. They like bigger flies. All right, we're back on the saddle. Okay, let's get all that back. All right, get attention on there. Where do I get the materials? Uh, usually, uh, the day after each stream, I put all the links for materials and other videos that I have onto the blog. So tomorrow that stream will come back and uh, in the description um, below the stream, you can see the link to the blog and uh, you can go and find me, there, find me there with all the different uh, uh, addresses if you want to buy that stuff. Or whatever stuff that I use, I usually link everything. So it's uh, norbertrenault.blogstop.com. You find me there. All right. Now we're not going to go too, too far because we need a little bit of room for the head. So this is going to be the last bit for the white belly at the top. And then we're going to switch. We're going to start to make that red head at the top. Same thing. The red head, we're gonna cut it back to give it a shape. But again, you don't wanna overdo and put too much. So a couple of loose wraps, and then we're gonna spin that red all around like this. Pull back. Little dam at the front. That's it. Now we're not compressing this head. We just leave it nice and loose because we want that fly to sink. A lot of people think you put deer, deer belly, the fly is going to just pop up. Maybe if you tie a small fly, but big flies like this, uh, they're going to sink. So we're going to do the same now. Couple of loose wraps and spin that belly around make sure it's all even i'm gonna put one last bit and be just ready to trim after The length of the two rabbit strip I use at the back, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you an exact number on that. Uh, for this, they're about they're about eight eight to ten centimeter long. You can, after, like I said, you can uh, change the the length of the rabbit depending, like I said, on your uh, casting ability. Um, on however you, what uh, of course you're not going to fish that on a six weight. Uh, like I say, all my pike fishing is done on a ten weight, so uh, ten centimeter, and they're not thick. They're about four millimeters uh, with this one, so it it casts no problem. Like the. What do we have? Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. I think I just missed the donations here. Thank you very much. I think, who was it? Oh, I'll have to go back. These things just fly by me. I don't see them. Thank you. If I don't mention your name, don't worry. It's a lot appreciated. Next, uh, next week, I probably will do the first. I'm going to start the build on that epic bandit rod. So if you want to join me and look. If you're curious how to build these rods, see what comes in the pack. 
how to build them. I'm going to do them straight out of the pack. I'm not going to use anything that's extra that doesn't come with the with the package. So if you want to have a look, uh, we, we'll be starting to build that 10 weight uh, because I want to use it for the springtime, so it has to be ready. Okay, stumble. I'm glad it happens to other people. Yeah, it always happens. Huh? <laughs> so now we have the belly. We have the head and we need just to trim all this, okay? So to trim that fly, I like to go the usual. For the head, a kind of a 45 degree angle from the eye of the hook and just cut all around that, that 45. Somebody bought me a coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, next next week's stream, uh, I'll be talking about a very touchy subject for many uh, pike leaders. So if you want to see what leader I use, how I attach my flies, uh, I'll be talking about that before I'll be uh, starting to build the rod. So you can join me. And we can talk about different leaders and uh, what works for me. And we're going to bling some leaders as well. We're going to put some little accessories on, on leaders, see how you can change leaders. So now we have to, let's see, we have to cut the head on that fly. So. Now you see you get you get that big thick belly here. We're gonna trim that. So if you want you can give it a brush just to untangle the fibers in the belly. Now basically we're gonna give it a, a cut just under the hook. If you see the final one, the way it's um it goes, the hook is exposed and the belly is nice and trimmed. So the head is round on the top and the belly is nice and flat. So I'll, I'll give you a nice swim and the fly is going to set sit properly. So don't go too tight to the hook. It's always better to start high and then go down, but we're basically going to cut straight in there. And you get that nice straight cut on the bottom. And you get the springy this is why I always put the anti-foul loop after the rabbit, not before. So you get a super spring, it swims really nice and you, you don't really have that, that uh, problem of the, the rabbit foul hooking. So that little trigger point is a little bit too long to my taste. I'm just going to trim it. It's only for a little bit of color at the back and to protect that hook from if ever the tail is going to wrap itself around but usually you have no problem it sticks and it stays like that it's a bit like a diver yeah pascal but it's it sinks it's a sinking diver dave yeah i need to buy some rabbit i'll include all the address for the rabbit if you want to buy a full a full rabbit pelt uh, and cut your own strips um one thing, the little video I did about the, how to cut your own strips, um, you have to be careful when you put it down onto a board to cut it, with, uh, especially with, with a cutter or a sharp knife. You do not want to squeeze, uh, let's say that's, that's a rabbit pelt, you don't want to squeeze the hair onto a board and then cut because you're going to end up cutting all the hairs underneath and you're going to get a really bad, bad job. I done that with my first pelt and I just messed it all completely. So you want that to be either way hanging 
uh, but it has to be loose with nothing against the back so when you cut you just cut the leather and not the hair at the back but I think the pelt the full pelt and the really good quality I mean I've never been disappointed with that guy's pelt um, I think he cuts it now for fly fishing because before he used to sell it for craft and I think it's got uh, he had so much interest with uh, fly fishermen now that I think he cuts the strips for you if you want so he can cut it but I think a, a full pelt on cut it's about uh, 10, 10 euro I think and you get you get bundles and bundles like this this is full of rabbit strips like and I think I have like about four pelts in that big box so yeah uh, like everything if you buy in in a large bit uh, you save a lot of money like and I use a good bit of rabbit as well okay what do we have what do we have Chris yeah Chris I think yeah you you, you sent me some some donations earlier I think it was you thank you Chris yeah the putting the loop after the rabbit is uh game changing for 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 bunny strips so we're gonna do another one straight onto a roll there okay uh, I'm gonna change hook I'm not gonna use the Sakuma I want something with a shorter shank so we're gonna go for the 410 uh, uh, uh. All right. I think that's actually the yeah that's the top gun from Sakuma as well this is the hook this is the Top Gun from Sakuma. I think it focus if I get really close. There you go. Nice sharp small hook. Um, another really really good hook. Not heavy. Can we use craft for a strip, strip instead of the rabbit strip? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, if you want, you can do it. But craft fur does not move the same as rabbit. Um, sorry, it does move nice, but uh, I think rabbit uh, wins hands down against synthetic like craft fur. Rabbit just moves a lot, a lot better. Once it's wet, it's brilliant, man. It's really, really brilliant. Uh, Let's see if I haven't missed anyone. I think I got every questions there. The material. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, no, no craft fur. Um, I, I don't use too many craft fur. Uh, sometimes I use craft fur, mostly on my smaller flies, like um, pike flies, uh, really small pike flies, or flies for perch I like to use craft fur but for a tail like that I, I just simply I think rabbit is is hard to beat like Peter thank you thanks for the dono mate thanks for coming thanks for being with us tonight really really nice to have you really nice to have everyone tonight it's uh, nice to see a good few people coming so next okay this fly is uh, just a little variation on the normal bunny normal bunny strip you get the little thank you peter you get the normal bunny strips where you attach the the rabbit at the back for the tail and then you just palmer some crosscut rabbit for the body and the head uh it's it works no problem but uh, sometime we found that to give that fly a little bit more hang time with uh, some bucktail or some uh, deer belly uh, gets the pike going even more more to your fly sometimes they like when it, it sinks fast but uh, most of my pike fishing i like sometimes something that just hangs or sometimes something that i can keep an eye on uh, and see the pike going for it so Funny enough, it's a fly that we've used a lot uh, in Alaska, and uh, it's been just taking the place apart. Like, and and I used it here, and I was just amazed with the results of the amount of fish we're getting. 
simple tiny fly and uh, my god yeah yeah catches you a lot of pike and good fish as well so this one not too big uh give you dimension of the of the rabbit here that we're gonna use we are at about six seven centimeter long see it's not a huge strip we're going for a bit of tan this time this is a magnum one it's six mil width just simple that's another really good color for pike tan i like to stick to my uh close to my naturals when i uh, fish for pike uh tan is a, is a good good choice now what do we need I'm gonna take I think I need a little bit of flash for this one. <laughs> Box of flash. Okay. Uh, same thing. We're going to do the same loop trick. So don't worry about putting the, the loop before the rabbit. We're going to put it after. So. Put a bit of glue, a bit of super glue on that. That rabbit is going to stick straight away to the super glue. You can wrap it around the shank a little bit if you want. There you go. That won't move at all. Again. This is 80 pound fluorocarbon. You can use amnesia, you can use any, 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 any heavy, heavy mono. So usually when you get your, your loop, there's always a bit of a curve, natural curve uh, on the loop. So try to put this onto your hook. So we're just after attaching simply the bunny here now we're gonna add a little bit of flash now for this i like something i like uv i like pearl pearlescent uv works really well last fly i tied as well that chewbacca you can put some flash but i usually don't bother like it works so i'm gonna put the uv each side of the rabbit one two okay simple again don't over complicate yourself when you tie for pike especially with bunnies you don't need too much stuff it's very minimalistic ties okay we're gonna Tie that loop now on top. I'm gonna cut the excess. Okay. You see that loop above the rabbit? We're gonna secure it. Make sure it doesn't move. We have a bit of glue at the back. Eric, merci. I think you're French. Merci, thank you. Thanks for the dono. Fantastic in the super chat. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're gonna push the rabbit into the loop with the flash. Push everything through the, that, that loop. There you go. Loop under. And straight away, you see, it pushes that rabbit strip way up high. Merci, Eric. Thank you for the dono. If it's too high, you can always bend a little bit that fluoro, push it back a bit. And you have it sitting a little bit more natural. If, if it's way too up, up high like that, push it back down, bend it a bit, tie it again. But usually it's fine, like just on the top like that, you're gonna have that, that rabbit sticking way high and that springy, that little bit of a springy tail as well. Now for, we're going to put a, just a little bit of crosscut rabbit now for the body. A 
crosscut is handy for that because you get all the hairs sitting properly. I do about three wraps. I don't want to do too much. Normally, with a, with a normal bunny, you'll be going all the way up to the head with the with the crosscut rabbit. But there, we're just going to leave a little bit of room for the bucktail or the deer belly. Depends how much flotability you want on the fly. Uh, this one I'm going to do with just bucktail. I want it to sink a little bit. Again, these flies are great for using the, the back of your bucktail. Part of the bucktail that nobody used. Everybody used the, the sides and the tips. But for these kind of flies, you can use the back here, especially at the base of the bucktail. It's really good material. It's hollow. And it stays no problem. Okay, we're not going to use too long hair. I take the longest out. Put a little bit at the top. I'm going to do half and half, top and bottom, like that. We have a nice full tie. Again, no need to compress that. It's not not a diver we're building. Uh, you just know by the name the bunny siever. It's between a deceiver and a bunny. It's the boys at Midnight Sun that showed me that fly the first time and I was just taken by it and I was like as soon as I'm home I'm gonna tie some definitely okay I push that bucktail back little dam at the front of tread and then we keep on going same thing that's gonna be cut all around I'm going to shape the head after. A couple of loose wrap now. I'm going to spin the hair all around the shank. Help it a bit. There you go. Help with your hands after if you want, if you need to. Make sure it's nice and even all around. Uh, Sometimes it takes very little bucktail to do to achieve that fly. It all depends on on how you want it. Uh, I fished those really heavy in bucktail to, to get them to, to float a lot. Uh, and sometimes something with very, very little bucktail just so the sink worked better. So, uh, But usually I like to do like the, the first fly we tied. Not to compact the bucktail too much. Leave it kind of airy. Uh, so it'll it'll sink, uh, but you still have a bit uh, of volume in the head to push some water. Um, what do we have? Uh, Scandinavian flash tiles with loads of colorful tons of flash. Um, yes, yes, I do. I do use uh, flash. Uh, I like. Um, I like to use them, especially when you need to get them moving, if they're a little bit slow to, to chase the fly. Um, here, the waters are usually very, very clear. So anything natural is okay. Uh, it works fine. Something that's a little bit subtle works better, especially with bigger fish. Uh, usually bigger fish, they don't get big by being stupid. They're like uh, fish that have seen flies before in some parts, some lakes. Uh, they've seen uh, lures passing by. So sometimes something that's a little bit more subtle will get you the bigger fish than something that's very, very fleshy. But there is days where the, the pike can be very lethargic. They don't want to move. And uh, something that's like really bling with loads of flash gets them moving. So yeah, I do use uh, uh, this type of flies. Uh, I usually like uh, the old classic as well, the flash tail whistlers. 
a really heavy flash tail with a bucktail body and a little bit of marabou, marabou at the front and some dumbbell eyes as well and they work quite well uh, but I usually I don't know I'm, I'm uh, thank you man fishing and free diving thanks Lucas very nice for you Dono I think that one will go back to uh, to you <laughs> soon we'll talk about that but yeah um, I do use uh, flash as well heavy flash flies they do work it's like everything uh, some days they don't some days they do uh, but if I have to choose, I, I like to, to stay more into the natural. Uh, I don't know, it's just a preference, just personal. Uh, what else do we have? Why did you turn the strip counterside of the tread? Ooh, counterside of the tread. Did I turn it counterside? I thought I turned it. It works anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Why do you turn the strip counter side? Uh, hold on. Play the strip. No, they go. I'm left-handed, so that's probably why you saw it the other way. I don't know if the, the stream shows in, in mirror as well. But uh, no, it goes with the tread. It goes with the tread. Okay. Now we just have a little bit of room to finish that fly. We're going to put just a tiny little bit of bucktail at the front. We don't need much now to finish that fly. Just a little bit. Thank you, Lucas. Much appreciated, man. Welcome to the stream as well. It's good to see new, fresh faces. Okay, let's turn that last bit of bucktail all around. We finished that. I'm gonna give it the usual 45 degree trim. Let's see if I put on this one. Just 45 degrees. Just to get a nice little profile. You don't have to go too deep into the head. Just all around. That's it. Simple little bunny siever. And that size, that size fly You'd be surprised how many big fish we get with that size. It's not all about massive flies. And I think a lot of people are a little bit confused, especially the guys that come from lure fishing into the fly fishing. Um, a lot of people think, uh, oh God, bigger is better. Uh, if you want to catch big fish, you have to fish big bait. It is true, but at certain time of the year. Uh, most of the time a big pike will gobble that so easily uh, it's like a little snack to them they just they don't have to chase it they don't have to worry about it uh, they just a little sip it goes straight in and yeah yeah you catch so many big fish with that you see pascal is saying exactly that now he's saying uh, this is a fly, it's a small fly for pike, yeah, but you don't have, always have to fish large, fi large flies for pike, sorry. Uh, you'd be surprised how many times big fish move for these little flies. So, bigger is not always better. But the important thing, if you do tie small flies like that, you get a really, really strong hook. Really, really strong hook. Yeah, Craig, bigger is harder to cast too. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you, could, you can fish that all day long. No problem. All day long. No problem. It's as easy as a small uh, fiber bait fish. Uh, no problem. This is so easy to cast, so easy to fish. The 
overall length of that fly i'll give you a quick measurement it is exactly bang on nine centimeter or in brexit money it's three and a half inches so that's the size and it's good it's good to to to, to switch during the day not to fish all as big flies uh, especially if the water's cold uh, especially if uh, the fish or the water is too warm uh, especially when the digestion of the pike is slow it's slowed down either way by high water temperature or low water temperature uh, when they get uh, a big bream or something they might have that sitting on the belly for quite some time and sometimes they don't want to chase a big fly if they're already full but a little snack uh, you can tempt a big fish in between meals it's a bit like us i mean you, you can have a big dinner you can feel full and if somebody comes and give you a big steak you go and go no i'm full but somebody comes and give you a little chocolate after the coffee you go ah i have a bit of room for that bit of chocolate and pikes are exactly the same in between big meals you can get big fish hitting the small flies and fairly often you you would find uh when you take remove these flies that there's already something at the bottom of the the throat of the pike so they, they like munching on small things so don't be afraid to fish small for, for big fish it works as well like um Eric says he don't it hasn't mixed bucktail and rabbit before yeah great combo man great great combo it's like rabbit and feathers um, um no sorry it's like feathers and bucktail like a deceiver it's just natural material that works works really well together uh well we know i can show you another one that i tie as well which is uh, weighted a little bit different this is uh inspired from the tarpon toad you might see them uh, anybody that went fishing for tarpon or watch videos about tarpons you see this type of flies but this is like made with a bunny tail and you get that big wide front head so it's flat This is made out of uh, canicalo, so it's nice and straight. Let's see if it focuses. There you go. This one swims really funny. Uh, it's it flutters uh, with the weight at the front. It stabilizes itself and you get that little side to side with the wings. You can see it front looking. That's the back. So they're just little lengths of Congo hair and canicalo that you crisscross. You can tie one now if you want, if anybody's interested in looking at this one. This takes a little bit more time, a little bit more complicated, but uh, it's it's one that that had his winning days as well. I had some good fish with that. Uh, why not raccoon or arctic fox? Um, I'm not mad about arctic fox. Uh, I think it's a little bit more rigid than um, than rabbit. It doesn't move as much. Rabbit really really flows. It's like nearly it's like the the marabou uh, of uh, of uh, of pelt rabbit. It's really really good. Fin raccoon. Uh, I do like fin raccoon. I've used it a lot in the past. Problem is it's very expensive and um, and it absorbs a lot more water than a rabbit strip. So. But it's it's good material. If I have to pick between the Arctic fox or the raccoon, I will go with the raccoon any day. It's a good material, but it's it's crazy crazy price for fin raccoon now. This hook was the Top Gun from Sakuma. Sakuma Top Gun in uh, that one was a, a four zero, four zero Top Gun. So yeah, don't have to tie big, especially if you use rabbit. No point tying huge flies with rabbits uh, because it's just like counter counteractive. Like you're gonna struggle 
casting the thing it's going to be difficult you're going to have a sore shoulders and you'll never use rabbit again you're going to be swearing at it and you'll be like oh rabbit is shit i don't want to use it again but uh, trust me uh, keep rabbit small in proportion and you'll be fly fishing it for a long time like you know heavy heavy uh, i don't know what size this this one's super light like this this is very light that that one was a four four knot um top gun top gun four knot and the sakuma the, the first one this one that's a six knot manta extra on this guy flounder in imi imitation uh no i do not tie uh, i haven't done any uh just because i don't have any coming up that way for pike uh, but i see you're saying in north wales you're having flounders coming far up the rivers uh yeah that'd be interesting uh, i suppose you could you could tie that 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 sort of thing with a smaller smaller tail that would make a, an excellent flounder imitation like especially if you use the that bronze back yeah that one will make a lovely flounder imitation like so actually let's let's try to tie one we're gonna buy it but we're gonna go with that model so yeah, like I said, tomorrow I'll put all the links of these videos because I have a video on that fly as well. That's the tarpon toad. Um, really, another good one for pike. After rabbit, uh, what else would I use it for pike? This is the, the three main flies that I use for pike. Uh, the bunny siever, the tarpon toad and that Chewbacca one. They'll be the three main ones. Um, after, I'll be doing a stream on T-bones, uh, articulated T-bones and single hook T-bone. And uh, I use what I call a whip tail. And some of them, uh, it's just a little tail at the back of the hook tied on, on a bit of mono. And sometimes I just put a little strip of rabbit for as the tail and it works really, really well. Like quite, quite impressive. Good way to make tails. Yeah, yeah, no, that that would work definitely as a flounder, definitely. Okay, I'm gonna make a little toad now. Thank you again, guys, for all the donors tonight. Really, really appreciated. Thank you very much. Like I said last week, I bought a few things for next stream. We're going to bring some leaders for Pike and we're going to build that uh, that epic rod. Okay, same thing, I guess we're going to go with the tan. I had a lot of success here with tan color. I'm a sucker for natural colors, kind of not too flashy. Okay, again, simple. Rabbit in the glue. And our little loop. Now you know the process by now. See that loop? You always have that little, little angle on it. Don't want it to stick too much at the back, but enough to keep that tail away from the from the hook. I'll push it back again over it, and it's sitting on top of that hoop. Yeah, I've never tried a scale down uh, tarpon toad for trout, but I mean, trout sometimes they, they they'll get anything too. Um, Especially if you fish for farm trout, like for 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 pond trout, like uh, rainbows and in club club water, we we've caught them on 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 crazy bait, like you know, 
Uh, I don't think a wild trout would be as crazy. Like, you know, I don't know if they were used to eating too much pellets and uh, has dwarfed a bit their head. But we we we, we caught uh, rainbows with, with fag butts, like, you know. So they, they go for anything, these things. But for uh, a wild one, yeah, a tarpon toad would be interesting to use, like, for for wild brownies. Okay. Uh, same thing, we're just going to blend the tail with the body. So we're just going to use a little bit of Congo hair. Just not too much. I'm going to wrap it around the side. There you go. Eric. Uh, C'est du 90 centième en fluoro. Eric was asking what was the thickness of the fluorocarbon I used to make the loop. It's uh, 0 0.9 mil, if anybody's interested. Or 80 pound. Okay, that's just below the loop, the fluorocarbon loop. I'm going to bring some of it, some of the Congo over the top. Not too much, just a few fibers, just to cover it. And hide that loop. Very simple. Now we're going to start the body of the toad. So they're basically small length of, you can use Congo, you can use Canicalon, you can use most fibers that you already have at home. You don't need anything special. All right. So it's just a crisscross. You get your fiber, your length of fibers, put it across the hook, go over like this, and then we're going to start shaping it. So we're going to pull back a bit, and then we're going to figure eight that fiber. Just figure eight. You'll know yourself. It'll it'll start sitting properly. There you go. I just repeat every time. Repeat. Do the same over the top. One, two, go around, figure eight. That's it. You got two more. So these back ones are going to go around the back. We're not going to really touch them or cut them. And after it's basically a triangular shape that you're going to cut from the head. Again, you can use this one um, either way with a weighted head with dumbbells at the front or you can just not put any dumbbells and use it just normal like that. But I like to, to put dumbbells on it to get that extra jiggy action that you get. You get that fast sink at the head and sometimes it's, it's, it's a movement that that pike really, really like. I find sometimes it's more about the action of the fly. So either way you get something suspending or you have something that, that's fast sinking with a really jig action where the fly really flutters. Sometimes they want that. Sometimes they want something that just mellows and sinks really slowly. It's up to you to find what they want. Uh, usually in the morning when they are not too fired up, especially if it's still cold weather, 
you want something that's not going to be too erratic, not something that's going to move too fast. So something that hangs around, that uh, goes really, really slow. Uh, and then as the weather warms up and they start moving from the deeper part up to the shelf and the break, they start to go up into the shadows or they want to go and get a bit of early sun and they start to warm up. Then it's maybe something that's a little bit for faster, more jiggy uh, with that fast head dive uh, gets a little bit better as the day progress. It's all to work with their body clock and the way they, they warm up like And figure out that. I'm going nearly all the way to the top. It's a fun one to tie as well after once you get the hang of that figure eight the fibers at the front it's a it's a fun way to do it like i enjoy tying these i haven't tied them in quite some times actually fire up questions guys if you want nearly at the top another one or two and we should be good to seal that sometimes you get the fibers get a little bit tangled like that all you need to know is get your your dubbing needle or anything and find the the separation in between the fibers open it up again and get your thread back in there again that's the tie you don't want to compress everything too much there is about maybe two two mil in between each section of congo hair there okay now we're gonna put Put some eyes and some weight at the front now. Figure eight that as well. Uh, if you want, if you want the eyes to stick and stay well, handy tip is just to put, just to put super glue on your thread. And then wrap that gluey thread. That's not going to move too much. We finish that at the back. Now all we need to do is just trim that head in a kind of a triangular shape. Yes, Craig. It's it's my, my some of my favorite colors as well. I think it's it's very natural, uh, very close to the to what they eat here. So spread out all these fibers like that. Now we're just gonna. Looks ugly as fuck now. You're like, what is this? The good thing with that is that it's, it's it gives you a huge profile. Like I said, with the fish usually looking up, seeing what's what's passing their way above them. This kind of fly, like they, they have a huge profile without being heavy. Mm. 
that's it. Now, if you want, you can put some um, some UV glue or some UV resin on the thread here to make it last even longer. So just a little bit along that thread here. UV glue, clear glue, or whatever you use, golf, whatever UV glue you use, you can secure that here. It's going to give a little bit more weight, so the fly will definitely sit properly down like that. Again, that's that's type of fly that you'll never see uh, somebody fly fishing for pike using, uh, but it's one that I use a lot, and, and yeah, it's good, good. Like I said, sideways, not too much profile, but from underneath, they have that huge profile, and when they sink, they have that tendency of, of moving a little bit with these wings. Again, the the loop at the back, making sure that that tail is not getting tangled. It will get tangled at times, but far less than if you put either way no loop, which is the worst case scenario, or if you put the loop before you tie the, the zonker. So tie the loop after the zonker and you get that, that little springy butt. I have no problem. And you can tie that really, really small if you want for perch fly as well. It works for perch. No problem uh, for bass, for perch, for, for any any predatory fish. But I have I have a fully detailed video uh, on my channel uh, with the tarpon toad for the pike toad. So tomorrow on the blog I'll put all the links. I put the links to buy the pelts if you want to buy the pelts yourself. Uh, put the links to the videos, and uh, yeah, that kind of wraps up uh, rabbit. That's what my three main use of rabbit for pike. And again, don't overdo it with rabbit because uh, it's just something that a lot of people uh, give up on using rabbit because it's too heavy. It wraps around the hook. Uh, it's that wet sock uh, thing that everybody thinks like, but if you keep it small, you will cast it all day long it'll catch tons of fish and it's not because it's a small fly that it doesn't catch pike. Uh, pike, you'd be surprised the amount of small fish pike can eat. It's not always a big brim, it's not always a jack pike. Uh, they don't always, they're, they eat what comes around and for them this is this is a little snack. It's like you going to the shop and getting a little a pack of M&M's or, or a bounty bar, you know. It's, it's just a snack for them and it's easy it's move slowly so they just go behind they don't feel intimidated by it they just go little bite and it slips straight in so use that if the fish are difficult um, and even if they're not difficult you could be surprised someday it might be just the thing that gets you that big big fish coming on so what palm test on the mono this one is uh, 80 pound mono 80 pound yeah you can go down to 60 pound it'll walk fine like you know you don't have to go 80 pound that's just what what i had up there but 60 60 pound i wouldn't go in under 60 pound because then you're not going to get that that spring action like that so so yeah that's it we have uh, wrapped up the rabbit um i'll be using a little bit of rabbit again when i'll be doing the the stream on the t-bones uh, we'll be doing using it for whip tail I'll be doing a, a feather whip tail and a rabbit whip tail and I'll be doing a T-bone single hook and an articulated one single hook but articulated as well. But for next Friday I think uh, Pascal thank you very much after buying me a coffee. Thanks again much appreciated. So yeah next week we're gonna start to do um, build that rod and i'll show you the how i make uh, my leader for pike uh, and again it's super simple leaders not over complicated i think people over complicate themselves when they when they, they talk about leader for pike uh, and what is the best what is not the best uh, keep it simple it's uh, like a, like my fly, fly tying simple is best uh, especially for leaders like you don't want to complicate uh, because this is one of the most important part of your gear you can have a really crap rod and a crap reel 
but if you have um, a really good leader you will land that big pike uh, if you have a very expensive rod and a shitty leader well you never land that pike so uh, it's the little details that you really want that uh, you really want that that to go like you know uh okay what else do we have Let's see the last guys last comments coming in uh, da, 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 da. you cut the full length in three or four pieces uh for the last one the length is cut in about the beginning is three piece at the back so you get a little bit of length here so that'll be yeah in three in thirds and then the top you see you don't need much length so this is cut in four like so longer at the back to get that profile and then shorter at the top you can tie that in green as well it'll make like a kind of froggy imitation too without the the the, the eyes but i found eyes and uh, that size of, of body works well you get a good swim a good action in the water and that's it we got all the chewies hopefully they'll be they'll be in the water soon yeah these these are great i really like them fish them so many times all right, I don't want to be rambling on and talking to repeating everything, but I think we're at the end of the stream, guys. It was nice to see so many people joining again. Um, we have a nice bunch of regulars coming. Again, thank you very much for the donos. Uh, next week, I show you the few bits I got to make these leaders more interesting. Uh, we're going to put some action in the leaders, so that's going to be fun. Uh, Stimbler says first time hanging out here enjoying immensely thank you very much Tim pleasure having you great especially in these times it's good that uh, people get together and spend a bit of time that's the only way we can do it now anyway safely so Chris thank you very much thank you guy all right guys I think it's uh, the end of this one thank you very much I'll see you next Friday same time same place See you, Chris. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk leader and we're going to build the fly rod. Well, we're going to start building the fly rod because it's going to take a few a few goes to do to finish it. Uh, but we're going to do the we're going to measure it and we're going to do the the handle on Friday. Start with the handle and then we'll be wrapping up some of the first uh, eyes. And uh, that's it, yeah. New rod, new rod to be fished for the springtime. Guys, been a pleasure. Thanks again. Thanks again for your support and your amazing donations. Very, very generous, guys. Much appreciated. Thanks again, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.